74 years as a pilot, what one experience is probably more your most exciting experience? Now, that can be good excitement or bad excitement, I suppose. <laughs> I've had some pretty terrifying flights. Uh, I've been in a lot of fires. That's pretty exciting. Uh, the worst one I had was being out of control. From the time that I put the gear handle up, 40 minutes later, I finally was able to get it. I had no controls except the rudder, and I was using my flaps and my speed brakes on an F-86 that had a new flight control system that malfunctioned. And uh, I wanted to save the airplane because we had 6,000 in the pipeline, and, uh, and, that, and that's big time for an aircraft company. And I managed to get the airplane under control and this is thinking outside of the box. And, uh, you know, you have to think, uh, when people ask me for advice about their flying, I say, know your capabilities, and above all, know the capabilities of the airplane, and don't exceed either one. And it will tend to give you longevity. But a lot of times, you can't do what you think would be the only thing to save your neck. In this case, I had to think fast because the airplane was completely out of control. And I changed it from being out of control to where I got it in level flight without anything connected here. And uh, just with flaps, throttle, speed brakes. And uh, I made it to the desert and I landed at 240 knots. And we didn't really think it, the airplane would stay together and everybody was yelling for me to get out. And uh, I landed on Lake Bed Road 11 miles, and I taxied up onto the main base at, at Edwards, Mirror Rock. And Jack Ridley was the operations officer and a great close friend of mine. And he came out to meet me, and he said, Bob, I've been listening to on the radio. He said, that's the hairiest flight I've ever heard about in my life. And I said, well, Jack, you want to feel something interesting? He said, yeah, what is it? I said, well, come, get up the ladder to grab this stick. It was in concrete. It hadn't moved since I tried to pull the gear handle up. I wasn't connected to anything. And uh, I dripped the skin and yipped, just instinctively trying to push that stick forward. But I knew I'd already had 10 or 12 flights in the airplane, so I knew it was a different beast altogether because you weren't connected to anything. It's the first time we'd ever done that. They now call it fly-by-wire, but we did it with uh, magic, I called it, bob weights and spring bungees and artificial field system. So the nickname was artificial field system. Well, we found out that what they did in the wiring system they had the, the normal system and the alternate system going through the same box of elect, electrical wiring, and it shorted out on one, and that left me with no control at all. So the stick wasn't involved in anything. It was just sticking there. And uh, we put more wires in there and changed that around so that we had separate wiring for everything, and we built 6,000 more airplanes. Aero TV is brought to you by... Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net.